Oh, here we are in my studio. I thought I would. I've just discovered this fantastic book by John Mystery. John Mystery was a writer in the 1930s, uh, post Second World War, or during the during the last bit of the Second World War and post Second World War, and he wrote children's stories, and I'm just discovering them, and I thought, you know what, they're fabulous, and I will read some for you. So here we go. This is from 1938 and the story is The Witch's Wife. In the long ago days of King Arthur all the land was filled with fairies and the elf queen and her merry company held many a dance in the green meadows but that was many hundred years ago. The world was a very different place many hundred years ago. <laughs> we don't have fairies these days. Anyway, it happened that there was a, that it, it happened that there was at King Arthur's court, I've got to get the rhythm and the pace, I'm so sorry, a young knight, handsome and strong, who one day as he was riding out came upon a maiden walking alone. She was very beautiful and the sight of her made him think she must be the most beautiful lady in the land. He went up to her and tried to carry her off with him by force, of course, darling. But before he could succeed, help came, and he was seized and taken before the king. The king sentenced him to die, which is rightly so, according to the law at that time. And he would surely have been put to death if it had not been that the queen and her ladies had not long and earnestly prayed for mercy. Who knows why? The king at last relented and granted him his life and left it to the queen to say what punishment should be given him. When the queen had thanked King Arthur, she sent for the knight. You are still in danger of losing your life, she said to him, but I will give you your freedom on one condition. You must find me the answer to the question. Seems fair, okay, doesn't it? Fair and reasonable. Don't go trying to steal maidens in the middle of the forest. Otherwise, you can either die or have a quiz. Here's the question. What is it that women most desire? If you cannot now give me the answer that I have in mind, you shall have a year and a day in which to learn it. Do your best and take care. For if at the end of that time you still cannot answer the question, you must die. This is a fabulous children's story, isn't it? The knight pondered a while, but he could not guess the answer at once. Fair enough. So he pledged himself to return to the court at the end of the year and a day, and he went away very sorrowfully. I would be packing all that life can in in that year and one day. Anyway, not this fellow. So how was he to find the answer to the riddle? He thought for a very long time by himself and then he asked everyone he met what was it that women loved best? Please in the comments below you can put your answer to that question. What is it that women love best? Anyway, but nowhere could he discover two people who agreed in saying the same thing. Some told him the answer was honour, some riches, Others, fine clothing. Others, again, flattery. But none of these, you're welcome to uh, add any of those things to the list below. But none of these things reply, and none of these replies pleased the knight, and he could not guess anyhow what it was that the queen had in her mind as the right answer. He wandered far and wide in his mournful search for someone wise enough to help him. At length the time came when he had to turn homewards again in order to return to the Queen by the appointed day. He was lay through a forest and he was riding along sadly when suddenly he saw a strange sight. In a little glade just in front of him was a ring of fairy ladies dancing four and twenty or more of them but as he drew eagerly near to look more closely and see if by chance he might gain an answer from them, they all vanished. Oh, fairies dancing in the, yeah, I'll let you look at the picture as well on the front. Oh, we've got this little picture too, beautiful. In the place where they had not, 
in the place where they had been, not a living thing remained except an old woman sitting on the grass. When he came near, he saw her and he saw that she was withered and ugly and as horrible a sight as he could imagine. Sir Knight, she said to him, standing up, though this road leads to no place, whither are you going? Tell me your errand and perhaps I can help you. We old folk have knowledge of many things. It's very true. We old folk have knowledge of many things. <laughs> old mother, he said, my trouble is this. I am as good as dead if I cannot discover what it is that women love best. If you could help me, I will reward you well. And he told her the conditions on which his life had been spared. Give me a word here and now that you will do the next thing that I ask of you, whatever it is, if it is in your power, said the old witch, when she heard the story, and I will tell you the answer. Can't wait. I will give you my word, the knight replied. Then your life is safe. I promise you that my answer will be that which the queen wishes to have, and the proudest lady of all the court will not dare deny it. Let us go on our journey without any more talking. She whispered a word or two in his ear and bade him pluck up heart. And together they rode to the court. The knight came before the queen and said that he was ready to give his answer and a great company of noble ladies gathered to hear what would be the reply to the riddle. Silence was proclaimed and he was called upon to speak. I've kept my word faithfully, he said in a manly voice. Oh, sorry. I've kept my word faithfully, he said in a manly voice. That was heard all over the hall. And I'm here on the day appointed, prepared to answer the Queen's question. The answer she desired was that women love power best. Whether it be over her husband or her lover. This is great kid stuff, isn't it? Anyway, if that is not the right answer, then do with me as you wish. I'm here ready to die, if you so will it. They all agreed that he had saved his life by his reply. <laughs> but when their verdict was made known, up started the old hag who had told the knight the answer. Give me justice, Lady Queen, before your court departs, she cried. I told the knight that answer, and he gave me his word that he would do the first thing that I asked of him, if it lay in his power. Now, before all this court, I ask you, Sir Knight, to take me to be your wife. And remember, it is I who have saved your life. Not that, said the king. This is like shades of grey, isn't it? It's fabulous. Not that, said the king, truly I gave my word, but will, will you not ask something else of me? Take all my riches, let me go. No, insisted the old woman, though I be old and poor and ugly, I would not let you go for all the gold on earth. I will be your wife and your love. My love, he cried, nay, rather my death. All the knight's prayers and entreaties were of no avail. He had to keep his word, and Mary, the hideous old hag, and a mournful wedding he made of it. He took his bride home to his house, feeling not at all like a happy lover, and his woe was increased by her words to him. Dear husband, will you not kiss me? It is the custom of the king. Is it the custom of the king's court for every knight to neglect his wife? I am your own love, who saved you from death, and I have done you no wrong. Yet you act towards me like a madman who has lost his senses with your groans and your glum looks. Tell me what I have done amiss, and I will set it right. You cannot set it right, said the knight sorrowfully. Do you wonder that I am ashamed to have married one of such mean birth, so poor and old and ugly? Is that the curse of your grief, she asked. Yes, answered he. Well, I could set it right, said his wife. But you speak so proudly of your high birth and old family. Such pride is worth nothing, for poverty and low birth are no sin. Look rather at him who leads the best life. 
both in secret and in open, who strives always to do gentle and honourable deeds. Take him for the truest gentleman and be sure that a noble nature like his is not made only by high birth or the wealth of his fathers. She's having a go. Anyway, this is the prince who was trying to steal a chick in the woods and, you know, had to solve a riddle and gets the hag as his reward for, you know, not being a jerk, punishable by death. But there you go. But as you say, I am a low, a low born, but, but then you, ha you know, sorry, anyway, then you're having the gall to call her. But you say that I am low born, old and ugly. Well, choose now which you would desire of me. As I am, this, this is the trick, poor, old and ugly, but a true and faithful wife who will obey you always, obey you always, or young and fair, but fickle and fond of vain pleasures, always emptying your purse and wounding your love. That's a tough choice. <laughs> the knight, the camera agrees, the knight did not know which to choose. He's a smart fellow. He was moved to shame by his wife's words and after a long while thought, he said, My lady, my dear wife, I put myself in your hands. Choose for yourself and what you wish is enough for me. Then I've gained the mastery. I have power over you, she said, if I may choose as I please. Yes, dear wife, he answered. I think that best. Kiss me, she said, and let us quarrel no longer. I will be both to you, both fair and true. I will be as good a wife as ever there was since the beginning of the world. And if I am not as beautiful as any lady, queen or empress on the whole earth, from east to west, then slay me and do with my life as you wish. The knight looked at her again, but instead of the withered old crone, he expected to see his eyes fell upon the most beautiful wife that could be imagined. For the old woman was a fairy and had wished to give him a lesson before he knew her as she really was. No longer now was he ashamed of her and they lived together happily till their lives. Isn't that a lovely story, boys and girls? Just the, and the moral of the story is, if you can find a fairy, you will have true love.